In this video, we solve one limit, one derivative, and one integral. They are all connected to x to the power of x. First, the limit question. What is the limit of x factorial over x to the power of x when x goes to infinity? It should be small, right? Because x factorial is multiplying downwards. If we pair the terms in the numerator and the denominator, we see that each fraction is less than or equal to 1. Therefore, we can enlarge each term except for the last one. The boundary is really, really soft, but it's tight enough for us to claim that the limit is 0. If we plot the gamma function and x to the power of x, we can see even in log scale they diverge really, really quickly. Next. The derivative question. This is a good example for implicit differentiation in calculus 1. Let's say y equals x to the power of x. Then we take logarithm on both sides. Then we take differentiation. So on the left-hand side, we have 1 over y dy dx. On the right-hand side, we have log x plus 1. Replacing y with x to the power of x, we have our final result. The derivative is actually negative infinity at 0. However, x to the power of x grows faster than normal exponential function for large x. The last integral question we are going to investigate actually has a beautiful name. It's called the sophomore stream. The name appeared in the book Experimentation in Mathematics. To calculate the integral, let's first rewrite x to the power of x as e to the power of x log x. Then we expand it to a series. If you forget the Taylor expansion of ex, you can watch this video here. The original integral becomes an integral of infinite summation. We can switch the order of integral and summation because the factorial in the integrand guarantees that this series will converge absolutely. Now we have to calculate this integral in yellow. x to the power of n log x to the power of n integrated from 0 to 1. After a few trial and error, we will see that the best u substitution is to set x equals e to the power of negative u over n plus 1. This way we can remove the fraction in the exponent. Swapping the lower bound and upper bound of the integration and cleaning the terms, we see an old friend, don't we? The last expression is exactly gamma n plus 1, so it is n factorial as n is an integer. It's time to substitute this integral back, and n factorial just cancel each other. Re-index the summation from 0 to 1, we have a very clean and elegant identity. This identity and its twin identity were first discovered by John Bernoulli in 1697. I have to admit that they do look like too good to be true that can only appear in a student's dream. Mm -hmm.